always love aviation. I live relatively close to the airport. I grew up in the St. Christopher Silver Sands CSCO area, so aircraft on a daily basis, I, I would just stargaze. Even, even sitting in primary school, the teachers used to shut the windows looking out to the airport side because all I used to do is sit outside and, and watch airplanes. And I, I wanted to be a pilot at one point in time. And then it more transitioned to being into engineering. So that love for airplanes and aviation was molded from, from that early age. Then there were some family friends who were into the field and spent a lot of time around those persons, especially one person I would mention is Mr. Burgess. He was an engineer with what used to be BWIA back then. And my, my favorite aircraft growing up as a child was the TriStar, uh, what we would call the, L, the L-1011. And I remember saying to my mom at the time, anything to get me close to airplanes, I will do. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, I then developed a deep love for air traffic control and and I would have gone overseas after receiving a National Development Scholarship to study aerospace engineering. Uh, Wish I would have done that in the United Kingdom. I would have had a brief stint with British Airways maintenance working on 747. So from that aspect, I had seen one part of the dream achieved as it pertains to the gradual progression. I, I just have a love for the industry and I'd always figured that what I would have seen, especially listening to the old air traffic controllers speak about back in the days before founding fathers and, and, and the interest and love the Honorable Arrow Barrow had for aviation, it, it just excited me more to, to see that this country has the potential to be at the forefront of aviation within the region. And I always said I wanted to be part of that dream. Why we became the forefront of aviation, um, when, when you look, especially as it has a lot to do with our historical ties with the British, the British would have left a lot of their infrastructure after the colonial times and we would have just replicated and predicated on that. Um, we were one of the first countries to have access to the, the modern navigation that is at that point in time, radars, etc. And that would have continued into the 70s and 80s. Remember, as a young controller representing the Civil Aviation Department and the Barbados Air Traffic Controllers Association, traveling across the region, helping with various aspects of dynamics of training in aviation. I was the chairman of education and training within the Barbados Air Traffic Controllers Association. And with that, it allowed me to help nurture others, both locally and also regionally and internationally. At one event in Australia, I got in a conversation with some civil aviation counterparts and they started to question about things Barbados was doing. And, and my first thing was, why would Australians or New Zealanders or Europeans be so interested in what Barbados is doing? Little did I know that they paid a lot of attention to what we did as a small island, I think we always used to say we were bun punching above our weight belt. And then it's interesting now in this time that even as the way we are handling the whole COVID situation, I think we're doing a similar the same job as to how we as a country handles the COVID pandemic and the response from our um, leaders and, and government officials and other stakeholders that across the world, not just the region, then persons are now looking at us in the same way in that light. We have a dynamic mix of traffic at, at most of those large air, um, airports and jurisdictions, even though they may have volume, the, the, the complexity of their, their traffic is so easy in that you just would line them up, all the aircraft traveling at the same speed, they're probably the same rate turbulence and rate category, the same separation. So it is just a matter of getting them lined up. And they're, 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 most of them would have a lot of advanced um, approach procedures, which would particularly control 
electronically so the controllers in those places don't necessarily have a lot to do especially in these in these global times but for a jurisdiction some somewhat like ours we had training aircraft you had the light aircraft which would if, if you're familiar with aircraft types would be the islanders the air commanders aircraft that are probably doing roughly 140 to 160 knots then you had the dash hits in the ATRs, which would consider medium category. And I'm just giving you some of the traffic mix that would probably be cruising between 200 knots to 260. Then when you try to have that mix of traffic come into one aerodrome, one runway, and mind you, a lot of these other countries would have, maybe have a separate runway for departure, maybe have two runways for arrival. And, and so they have that mix. We sincerely don't we have one and i always when i explain it to persons i i always say to them our mix of traffic is like you have a person walking across the street a bicycle rider and a person driving a motor vehicle and you're trying to get them across a traffic crossing so the mixture is completely different well rather than having all walkers or all bicyclers or all motor cars so having that mixture to in terrain in entwine them in terms of the veteran the sequencing the levels the descents it is way more complex than having all of one category i had the opportunity to build and and work with a fantastic team in st vincent i, I think the beautiful thing about it is that i had the opportunity to to mold persons select persons and work with them to build from scratch right up it, it, as it pertains to an entity that was new it was uh, something that they had not had before in terms of size and to, to pertain to the mix and it was just quite interesting aviation has never been an industry that is one that is static it is always dynamic so you just adapt, uh, adapted that methodology to the COVID experience I mean, even as it pertains to what was said initially as to the WHO, you know, the wearing a mask, the not wearing a mask. So as each school of knowledge evolved, then you had to evolve. So I, I wouldn't say that you were sitting there just waiting, well, how to, it's just a case of being able to adapt and mitigate. And as you said, roll with the punches. When I um, assumed office, there were already some protocols in place and and the beautiful thing about it is is that our airport and airspace we never closed it would have closed to commercial traffic but we were still very much um, a part of the humanitarian and repatriation effort across the region we had protocols in place and because we were constantly working we had a lot of time to see them work, mitigate, and and then implement. Even today, as you know, we've had a, a, a commercial flight of British Airways with over 200 passengers, and I would say, based on the complexity and demographic of the passengers, they were probably 80% tourists, and, and the person might say, well, what person's traveling at this time? I mean, number of visitors arriving speaks volumes to what we have implemented, the protocols that are out there, and what they are aware that Barbados is doing. So many visitors will know that and feel safe once they would have come into our our shores and, and leave. So Barbados is a place to be. The way they would have handled the implementation, the application, and, and how we are constantly uh, improving on our protocols to make sure that the experience remains this, um, a fantastic experience whilst maintaining safety for not only our visitors, but also our locals. And that, and that is one of the things that stood out in, across this entire um, process for me is that no matter what, at every step of the curve, even though we wanted to see the return of tourism, which is our main mainstay, that keeping the staff, 
safe and keeping the national product and our national security at the forefront was 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 paramount in this entire process. I uh, would really want to thank my engineering team publicly for the conceptualization of turning the uh, what is what was a departure concourse into an arrival hall with facilities for swabbing, etc., and all the amenities that you would would want in in a facility such as that. So, in my capacity as CEO, what I would want to leave with anyone who wants to come to Barbados, whether to visit friends and family. There's no place like Barbados. Um, um, enjoy the sun, enjoy the sea, enjoy the sun, and a safe, wholesome environment. So just come on down.